Hello everybody, uh, this is Steve Fisher here. Today we are going through legal problem 1128, number of equivalent domino pairs. Before we start uh, talking about this problem, please just smash that like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel, which is dedicated to provide high quality lead code tutorials to help fellow software engineers or CS majors um, to better prepare for software engineering interviews. With that said, let's dive deep into today's coding problem. The problem goes like this. Given a list of dominoes, this domino, dominoes I equals A and B, it's a pair basically in terms of coding context, it's an 1D array, is equivalent, so it's defining the equivalency, is equivalent to dominoes J, which has C, D, these two elements. If and only if either A equals C and B equals D, or A equals D and B equals C, that is, one domino can be rotated to be equal to another domino. And this problem is asking us to return the number of pairs ij for which j i is smaller than j, but both of them are greater than or equal to zero, or smaller than domino's length, and domino i is equivalent to domino j. Walking through one example will help us a lot to understand. Well, given this dominoes, there are four domino in this domino array, one, two, two, one, three, four, and five, six. We can tell there is only one equivalent domino pairs. That's why the output is 1. Which which pair is that? It is 1, 2, and 2, 1. These two are equivalent based on the definition of equivalency of these domino pairs, right? We can, this this pair, this pair's first element is, is equal to the second element of the second pair. And the second element of the first pair is equal to the first element of the second pair. So these two pairs are equivalent. None of the rest, or any one of the first two, is equivalent to any one of the rest. So we'll simply just return one. That is the result of, of this um, given array, this given array of dominoes. So how do we tackle this problem? Um, at first glance, it looks like we can have a nested for loop. We can basically, um, so, the nested for loop is going to be like this. We'll just basically go through int i equals 0, i minus uh, m minus 1. This m is going to be dominoes length, dominoes length. And then we'll have another one, j equals i plus 1, j minus m, j plus plus. Right, we can simply have this nested for loop to go through. We basically will compare every single one of the rest of the elements in this array to the first one, to the ones that we are currently iterating through. Actually, this one is not going to be enough because what we need to do is we need to compare with all of the rest, which includes the previous ones as well. So it's going to be j equals 0 and j minus 1. If i not equals to j, then we will do the comparison so that we're not missing out any possible domino pairs. This is one possible solution, but it's kind of brute force. And actually, if you code it up using this way, it's not going to be accepted. It's going to <laughs> throw exceptions saying time limit exceeded because this is at least O n squared time, right? meaning n is this m, which is the length, the number of rows, the number of pairs in this domino, right? It's not super efficient. So how can we do, um, do solve this problem in a more efficient way? Um, just think about all of the, the, all of the domino pairs that we have gone through in the outer for loop. Is there a way that we can memoize this, this past occurrences? A very simple way is that we can, uh, so if we go this uh, go with this brute force, we apparently we don't use too much space, it's going to be almost a one space, but we can, we need to make um, compromises. This is a very good compromise, which means we need to trade space for time. In this case, when M is very big, we need to use 
some extra space on memory to help us speed up the algorithm. We can actually optimize the algorithm from O n squared to O n at least, right? How can we do that? That means we can we need to memorize all of the past domino pairs that we have gone through. How can we do that? A very natural data structure that comes into mind is hash map. Again, hash map. So hash map is very if it if it's not the most, it's one of the very powerful data structures that can can come in handy in a lot of coding interviews or in actual in actual practice. If you work in industry as a software engineer, hash map is being used almost everywhere, right? It's really handy and really powerful. So how can hash map come into play in this context? What we can do is that when we iterate through every single pair, every single domino pair, we can put the domino pair that we see as the key of the hash map. Then we'll have the value of the hash map entry to be the number of occurrences that has that is equivalent to this domino pair, right? So the next time, say, when we iterate through this domino pair, first we see one, two. We put this one as the first entry of the hash map. The, the key is going to be sort of a hash of this one, two. And then the value is going to be zero, right? Because we haven't seen any of the equivalent domino pairs that's equivalent to this one pair, right? But when we go to the next one, which we know is equivalent to the first pair, and then we somehow use a function to calculate a hash key based on two one, which is equivalent to the hash key calculated out of one and two. So we know the, the same equivalent hash key does exist in this hash map. So we know, now we know there does exist one pair. So we're going to get for this one, we're going to get equivalent number one out of this hash map. Then we can do the same thing when we go through this array when building this hash map. At the same time, while we're building this hash map, we can also check the number of equivalent, the number of equivalent pairs, which, which means we can just basically have one full loop to go through, build a hash map, and find the number of equivalent domino pairs. That's it. Now the problem, if you follow along, I hope you are. Now the problem comes down to how do we come up with the hash function to have to be able to hash this um, two element array into um, into a key, basically an integer in this case to to simplify it, so that one two and two one could have the same hash key. I think one of the <laughs> Um, constraints might come in handy because see here the second constraint is dominoes ij. This is standing for every single element in this domino matrix. It is greater than or equal to one and smaller than or equal to nine. This is this is going to come in handy. We can simply use a very small trick to all. I would say a very common practice for such use cases to. To we can devise a hash function ourselves. Say we know one, two, two, one. These two are equivalent domino pairs. So we can come up with, with a hash function, we'll call it function, so that it takes in a pair, say x and y, and it produces a value, which we'll call it the key. We'll make sure that the key that we, we get by passing these two uh, parameters into this function is going to be the same, right? That's the purpose. We can simply devise a function ourselves. We can just call it, we can call this function to be something like f x. No, we don't need in the parentheses. Simplify it. x, y. We can make it called 10 times x plus y. That's it. If 10, if we said, assumed x is to be the smaller number, y is to be the big number, either way, it doesn't matter. From this function, this is a function that we just hypothetically define. You could, you could even define it to be 100, uh, 100 times x, or even like 5 times y. That's totally fine. As long as you can guarantee 
that th this function produces the consistent distinct key value out of either one of the pairs and one of either both of the pairs that we pass into this function are going to generate the same key which we which we are going to use as, as the hash key of the hash map so that we know these two pairs are equivalent that's it so the one that i'm going to use is going to be this and make sure that x is smaller than y as I said, you can devise whatever function that works for you as long as you can guarantee to meet the condition to make sure that these two pairs, since they are equivalent based on the definition of this problem, they can generate the same hash key that we can put into the hash map to help us get the result that we want. That's good enough. All right. With that said, with that uh, set in the context, we can start coding the problem. All right. We'll code the problem. Um, that's the Domino's length. We'll have a hash map, as I said, to memorize, to help us memorize so that we don't need to have a nasty for loop to go through everything again and again. What we'll do is we'll have an integer. Basically, we'll use the hash function that I just showed you guys to calculate the key, the value as the key of the hash map, and then the, this the value of the hash map is going to the num to be the number of equivalent domino pairs. Now let's see, or how many times it has occurred in the past occurrences. So here we'll go through this. Uh, we'll call it pair dominoes. Uh, what I'll do is I'll call it a small. We'll make sure that. I get the smaller one and the bigger one from this pair. Mm, pair zero, pair one. And then I'll have another one, I'll call it big. I'm just uh, writing in, in a very verbose way so that we're on the same page to make it easier to understand. And then we'll calculate the key on the key to be small times 10 plus big and then here we'll have another variable called count which stands for the final result which is this is a variable that's going to hold all of the number of equivalent domino pairs in this given array so how do we calculate count here what we're going to do is to map get or default again this is an API built into Java since Java 8 for, for hash map, which is very handy. What we're going to do is key. That's it. So get our default. So we're trying to get the key, get the value of the number of equivalent domino pairs based on this key. If it doesn't exist, we'll just return zero, right? That's it. After that, we, what we can do is we'll put, right? We'll put this key into this hash map and also get our default key zero plus one. We'll put we'll put this key, which stands for a hash a hashed value of this domino pair, into this hash map so that we're done. After building this and after we iterate through this, we can safely return count. That's it. Now we can try to submit. It's accepted. Uh, that's basically the entire algorithm of this problem and very straightforward after we walk through and after we go through the thought process and, and analyze the pros and cons if we don't use, um, if we don't take advantage of hash map, which basically to use some extra space to help us speed up the algorithm. So in this context, after we do it this way, the time is going to be O n, right? n is the number of rows, number of pairs in the middles, right? So we only need to go through this entire domino array once. That's it. 
there's only one for loop here, right? So the time complexity, we killed the time complexity from the very initial brute force solution, which is on squared, which is very not optimal, right? And then space complexity is on as well, because that's the worst case. There is no single um, equivalent domino pairs, which means we have to put n entries in the hash map, which is the worst case, which is the um, upper bound of space complexity, right? It's not too bad, but we have won we have improved the time complexity a lot. All right, that basically concludes the tutorial for this little code problems. Again, please smash that like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And also, please subscribe to this channel as we can continue to publish uh, legal tutorials on a daily basis. Please also feel free to leave me any comments, questions in the comment section below. I would really, really appreciate it. See you guys in the next tutorial.